I think the major problem in why we have a global health problem is we're treating everyone the same and genetically we're all different and we respond differently to the foods we eat, how we exercise and lifestyle choices uh, and that's the difference. We are all unique and you can't use the one-size-fits-all approach. Some people can eat a, a lot more carbohydrates than others. Um, some people can have a cu cup of coffee after maybe three o'clock in the afternoon and still go to sleep that night. Uh, so there's, we are all genetically unique. And the exciting thing is our genes are not our destiny. And some people, um, it's harder to lose weight because it's not so much about losing fat, it's about a thing called inflammation. And inflammation, for those that may not be familiar with it, is when we have a sporting injury and maybe twist our ankle, it inflames and gets red, and that's this thing called inflammation. Uh, and so what we're doing today with what we call a obesogenic environment, a lot of the foods we eat are producing more of this inflammation, and it's the inflammation that's problems, and not the fat burning fat. So knowing your genes, what you should be targeting is a, you, what makes it different. Absolutely. Um, I think we've had a 40 year lie about the low fat diet um, and what it is, most people that go on a low fat diet eat a high carb diet. Now genetically some people can't cope with a high carbohydrate diet. So it's knowing what to feed your genes, how to exercise for your genes, not your neighbours, your friends or your family. We are all unique individuals and what we provide is unique interventions to help the person achieve their health goal, whether it be to run in a marathon, God love them if they want to do that, reduce their blood pressure, lose weight, have more energy, or just feel better about themselves. There's a certain gene that determines how much fat we absorb when we eat like a high fat diet. And if you have that gene variation, if you go on a low fat diet or a calorie restricted diet, the cells in their body just shrink down to a very tight ball. And when you then go back to your normal diet, they spring back bigger than when they started. Then you go on a bigger, and then you go on another diet, then they shrink down again, and all they do is keep going backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. And the reason being is that the typical diet for losing weight has been a low fat, high carbohydrate diet, where in actual fact, it should be having some more of the good fats and cutting down on the carbohydrate, which is the opposite to what has been out there in the marketplace. I think the most important thing to realise is that the one-size-fits-all approach to health, healthy living, healthy ageing doesn't work. Genetically, we are all unique and we should celebrate our uniqueness, not compare ourselves with somebody else. And that our genes are not our destiny. And I think it's also important that aim with that knowledge, and I think leave with one example, that two ladies can go into the gym, do exactly the same exercise to try and lose weight, one lady loses weight, the other one doesn't, because genetically the second lady should be doing, say, resistance work, not aerobic. But once the lady is given that knowledge that it's going to take a little bit longer and she's just got to do a different style, type of exercise, it's very empowering and very liberating that we don't have to compare ourselves with other people at the gym, at restaurants or whatever, and that we can have our own personalised target and uh, strategic interventions so that we can maximise our potential for healthy living. And I think that's the key message. My wife has a great example um, to explain this. Uh, we've all been given a playing field in life and this is, assume it's a soccer field. So this is the playing field for healthy living, healthy ageing. Now from my point of view, the, my boundary is determined uh, the risk of cancer, my playing field might be smaller than other people. And my father never had that knowledge. For example, if I smoke, I have the gene that cannot get rid of smoke toxins, so I'm out of the game of life. So by not smoking, I can stay in this and have healthy living, healthy ageing. But I've got a whole playing field to play in, but no one was able to define that for my dad or my mum. If he'd had that knowledge and my mother had had that knowledge, they would have had, uh, been able to reduce the risk of cancer. So this is very powerful, knowing your playing field in life, to maximise your potential for healthy living and healthy ageing. The basis for fit genes is we have to have scientific research to validate what we're doing. As on the internet, Facebook, a lot of the things out there are just fads. There's no science to justify it and some people make a lot of money. Now, the fact is that 50% of people 
that have a heart attack have got low cholesterol. So if all the research about the importance of cholesterol was true, why do 50% of the people that die of a heart attack have low cholesterol? So it, genetically, there's a lot more to it than just trying to treat everyone as the same. And that's the unique with, uh, approach with fit genes is we look at genes that affect healthy living and healthy ageing, and we're not looking at genes to associated with disease. But most importantly, all the genes we look at, there are interventions that can be used to make the genes send out the right signals. So it's all about knowing what your genes are, not your neighbours, and then knowing what is the most appropriate intervention. So we have very personalised, strategic and targeted interventions to help people improve their health and wellbeing. What the Fit Genes philosophy I think is rather unique that our focus is on cell health and looking at the basic building block of the body. And we only look at genes that are associated with how the body, body functions at the cellular level, number one. Number two, they have to be well researched. Number three, it has to be more 10% of any ethnic population. It has to be relevant to your, your clients. But most importantly, there have to be interventions in nutrition, exercise and lifestyle that are backed by solid evidence that can help the patient make the most appropriate choices in what they should eat, how they should exercise and lifestyle choices. We're partnering with the Laureate, so um, they're our strategic partners here and they provide it. And so they provide not only the profile, they provide all the backup support between, they've got the dietitians, the doctors, and they've got others to help. So there's a whole team. So it's not about just doing a profile, it's then having people also then to work with you if you need that extra level of support. So we can actually help people across the whole health spectrum from, we are currently working with Olympic athletes, um, elite athletes, we work with uh, corporate executives, we work with premenopausal, menopausal women, women just struggling to lose weight and everything they're using, doing is not working. We have uh, people that have children with autism, so we go across the whole spectrum. So the most important thing is what is the person's health goal and is the current way they're trying to achieve that working? And if not, go to the lorry and have your profile done and you will have more targeted, personalised, strategic interventions to help you reach your health goal.